Hi, welcome back. I hope you had a good first week. So this week we're going to be working on um, lessons five through eight from level E, and you will need your activities for learning abacus, the place value cards, which look like this, the math card games book, a dry erase board with marker, the short multiplication chart. So that's what this looks like. And it can be found at the back of your lesson book in the appendix or in your appendix packet. You will also need your math balance. It's a basic number card deck. Remember, those are the green backed cards. And the multiplication card deck. Those are the blue backed cards. Okay, so in lesson five, the objective is to review trading on side two of the abacus. The warm up is a review of subtraction strategies, and you may want to go over those with your student before you start asking questions. So, just to remind you, they are the going up, part from 10, and all from 10 strategies. Okay, after the warm up, we're going to be working with side two of the abacus. Now, remember, on side one, each bead is worth one, but on side two, the value of the beads is whatever the place value is above those beads. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and switch to another camera here so that you can see the abacus side two. Okay. okay, there we go. So notice that there are two wires under each number. So here's two, under 10 there's two, under 100 and under 1,000. There are two extra wires, the third from the right and the third from the left. They are there for two reasons. One, you need them for the other side so that you have 10 rows, but also if you were to enter beads all along here, it would be difficult to tell the difference. The beads would all blend together. So we're gonna keep a space to separate them so that it's easier for the kids to see what they're working with. Okay, when the beads are down, the abacus is cleared. You will also wanna keep those beads as even as possible on those two wires um, because, for example, I, if I'm going to enter eight on the second side, I'm going to do it like this. I could have entered it like this, but then it makes it difficult to see when I need to trade. Um, so if we're going to enter eight, we're going to keep it as even as possible. Let's say we were entering five. It doesn't matter if this bead is on this wire or on this wire. So the kids can tell easily that five is an odd number because it's lacking a partner bead over here. But four, for example, is an even number because the beads are paired up. So for example, I'm going to enter 3,200, 510, eight. Okay. Now you see that these beads, I've entered three of them because each bead is worth a thousand. Under the hundreds, I've entered two of them. Each bead is worth a hundred. So we have 3,200, 510, eight. Now notice how I moved the beads as a group. You're going to want to keep working on subitizing on this side until your student can automatically enter the quantity so that no counting is necessary. So if they count, go ahead and have them do it um, back up and subitize the quantity that they actually want to enter. So in this lesson, you're going to start by learning how to enter, I mean, I'm sorry, learning how to trade 10 ones for one ten. So let's say we had six ones already entered, and we're gonna add six more. 
you can see right away that we, we are over 10 because we have all of one color. So I'm going to trade 10 ones for 110. How did I know that the number of beads that I just took was 10? I didn't count them, I subitized them. Well, the way I know is I will leave behind the same number of yellow beads as I'm taking of blue beads, okay? So the blue beads are mirroring the yellow beads. So now I can complete my trade, 10 ones for 110. Okay, let's say that we're gonna add 10 tens for the next one. We're gonna have to trade again. I'm going to trade 10 tens for 100. Okay, so then let's say that we are going to add um, 12 hundreds. I'm going to add 12 hundreds. I will leave behind three beads because I'm taking three yellow beads. I'm trading the 10 hundreds for 1,000. So that's the activity that you'll be doing, learning how to trade tens for one. Uh, 10 ones for 110, 10 tens for 100, etc. Now the next activity is adding by twos. And this might be a little tricky um, just because your student isn't as familiar with the abacus as somebody who would have started off with Right Start. But it's still a great exercise. And I would encourage your child to try to get to the right answer um, if they don't do so on the first time, a couple of times. But I would not push it to the point of frustration. If they tried the exercise to possibly three times and are starting to get frustrated, I would go ahead and move on to the game. But let me go ahead and show you what this exercise would look like. So we're gonna add two beads, so that there's two. And then I wanna add four, and I wanna add six. So two, four, six. Oh, look at that, I'm gonna to need to trade. So I'm gonna trade those 10 ones for one 10. Now I can add eight. Now I need to add 10. Now I'm gonna add 12. So. 10, 2, and once again, I need to trade. So I'm going to trade 10 ones down for 1, 10 up. Now we can move on to 14 and 16. I'll leave that down here until I get the 6 up. There's 16. And sure enough, I need to trade again. Now we're going to do 18. We're adding in 18. I can trade. Now we're adding 20. Okay, then we're going to go um, 22. And you can see I'm going to need to trade. So I trade 10 tens for 100. And we keep going until you add up to 30. The target um, amount is 240. So as I said, if they great, get to there, great. If they're getting frustrated, let's just move on. Okay, let's come back to the regular camera. Okay, so the next activity is the bead trading game. And this is game A7.1. So you can find that in the Math Card Games book. And it's usually played with those basic number cards, the green backed cards. But for this game, we're gonna use place value cards. Make sure to remove all the thousands that are 4,000 or higher, okay, um, before giving the stack to your students. There is a blog about this game, though it does not use the place value cards. It uses just the regular basic number cards, but it does give you an idea of how to play the game. 
I'd like to point out the note um, in the explanations area. It says on page three, Roman numeral three, number 25, Dr. Cotter says, in Japan, the goal of a math lesson is that the student has understood a concept, not necessarily that he has done a worksheet. So I wanna remind you that um, the goal is for your student to actually understand and they don't need to be doing a lot of busy work, okay? So moving on to lesson number six. Our objectives are to review and practice multiplication strategies, and the warm-up is reviewing the subtraction strategies from lesson three. Right Start teaches multiplication using arrays, and forming these arrays on the abacus makes it very easy to see the answer. Notice how six times three can be said as six taken three times. When using the abacus, this way of saying the equation makes complete sense. And the explanation on the right-hand side points out that it is consistent with other uh, operations of arithmetic. So it's, it's nice to use that six taken three times or four taken eight times or whatever the equation is. So several strategies for multiplication are explored and make sure that your student understands how each one works. Later on, the favorite one can be the one that is the go-to strategy, but in the beginning, we want to introduce and understand all of the strategies. And sometimes with the older kids, you might get a little bit of kickback on that. I already know how to do it. And that's fine that they already know how to do it. As long as it's efficient, that's the strategy that they can use. However, I would be pleasantly persistent about it and just let them realize that there are other ways to do it because I think that they'll be thankful for that later on down the road. So next we're gonna explore how to use the short multiplication chart. This is a neat little tool that um, helps children see the relationship between multiplication and division. So just like the abacus, the cells on the short multiplication chart are color-coded in groups of five so that no counting is necessary. Let me go ahead and show you what that looks like. So I'll go ahead and get the other panel going here. Okay. And I'll use a pen to kind of point out what we're talking about. You should also be looking at this um, in your appendix packet or at the back of the book. So let's go down to row four. Here we are at four. And I wanna know what four times four is. So we'll go four over four spaces and the answer is 16, just like we expected. But what if I wanted to do four times six? Well, I can't keep going like you would on a normal multiplication chart. We've cut off those extra numbers. They're the duplicates. So instead on the short chart, what you wanna do is go over four spaces and down two, because remember it's four times six, and our answer is 24. We could have also found the answer six times four is 24. Let's take a look at another one. Here is seven, and I wanna know seven times nine. So remember, it's color-coded, so I don't have to count the squares. I know that I'm moving over five, that's when the white squares start, stop and the darker squares start. So I've moved over five, two more is seven, and then two more go down to would be nine. So my answer is 63. Seven times nine is 63. Okay? All righty. So you're going to finish up today's lesson by playing the game Bring Around the Products. This is game P32. P is for product and the number is 32. This game covers all of the multiplication facts and even if your student isn't very solid on all of those facts, I would encourage you to play this game and just have the short multiplication chart available and the abacus available for reference. It's a very fun game and we do happen to have a video um, explanation of it on our website. So go ahead to our website, rightstartmath.com, and in the search bar, just type in P32, and you'll get to that video. 
All right, don't forget that the in conclusion part is really important. It's a quick review of today's topic. Next, we have lesson seven. It's our last review lesson from this book. Um, and so we will be reviewing and practicing the division strategies. Don't forget to use the abacus and the warm ups if necessary. In fact, I would encourage your student to use the abacus often because remember, they're not used to using it, so the tendency will be to avoid it. And I would like to encourage them to use it as much as possible so that they get the, the visualization down. All right, notice that we'll be introducing division through multiplication first. So take a look at the first equation. Four times three equals 12, or four taken three times equals 12. The question is, what does four mean in that equation? And if your student doesn't know what the answer is or is kind of confused by that question, because I'd say, well, four is four, right? Um, have them use the abacus and enter four taken three times. And that should make it pretty clear that what we're looking for is that four is the size of the group. And regardless of how the question was answered, I would use those words to summarize the answer. So I'd say, yeah, four is the size of the group. That's what four is. Okay. This will also help model how you want the rest of the questions answered. So the next question is, what does three mean? And the answer is, how many groups or the number of groups? Okay. The next problem uses a variable, n, in six times n equals 48. So your student will enter 48 on the abacus and then figure out how many groups of six there are. Next, your student will find the answer on the short multiplication chart and learn that the problem can be written as a division problem as well. The game today is called Find the Two Factors. It's number P29. This game does have a blog. Just enter P29 in the search bar on our website for more detailed information or go to the Math Card Games book. So don't forget to sum up your lesson with the in conclusion section. Now lesson eight, there's a few objectives there. It's to learn the term remainder and then to find the remainders after dividing. So after a quick warm up of multiplication and division, we learn about remainders. Remember to give your student the short multiplication chart. It's a very handy tool and it won't become a crutch. They won't need it forever, but it is very handy to be able to, to quickly find the answer. Your student will solve one problem three different ways. First on the abacus, then on the multiplication chart, and then on the math balance. And the funny thing is, is notice how the answer is not the simple arithmetic answer, right? Um, the answer is actually eight. You'll need eight tables, not seven remainder two tables because those two extra people need a table of their own, right? So the game today is called Quotient and Remainder. It's D7 in the Math Card Games book. And it does have a blog. When you um, type in the D7 in the search engine, it'll be the second game that comes up on our website. Okay, well, that's it for your second week. And I hope you have a really wonderful week. See you next time. Thanks. Bye-bye.